right, so for this week's Challenge Wednesday question, we have our patient Cameron. And Cameron is being monitored for pulmonary hypertension and evaluated for a suspected exacerbation of his core pulmonale. Now, the treating therapist requests that his student anticipate the lines that will be present prior to entering the room. Now, which of the following is the most likely being used to monitor the pulmonary hypertension? So we have A, arterial line, B, Swan Gans catheter, C is the Hickman catheter, and D is the PIC line. All right. So when we look up at this question, we have our patient Cameron. He's being monitored for pulmonary hypertension and evaluated for a suspected exacerbation of his core pulmonale. So we got to slow down a little bit because this is all really important. First of all, pulmonary hypertension is not systemic hypertension, y'all. All right, there, there is a difference between the two. When we're talking about systemic hypertension, we're talking about the force of, of blood flow on the walls of the peripheral arteries, all right, or the arteries that are leaving the heart and going out towards the periphery. Now, pulmonary hypertension is related to the pressure that's on the walls of the pulmonary arteries. You know that those are the vessels that carry the blood from the right ventricle and bringing it towards the lung tissue, all right? So if we have any backup of fluid in there or decrease in diameter of the artery walls, that creates pulmonary hypertension, all right? So now we know what that is, all right? The patient also has suspe uh, suspected exacerbation of his core pulmonale. Now you need to know core pulmonale for the MPTE. It's another name for right-sided congestive heart failure. And we know that congestive heart failure is the lack of the heart or the inability of the heart to meet the demands of the body. The supply does not equal the demand. All right. So all that makes sense. And it says that the treating therapist requests that his student anticipate the lines that will be present prior to entering the room. So that makes sense. Perfect. We go down to our last statement, the question stem. It says, which of the following is the most likely being used to monitor pulmonary hypertension? Now, this last piece, this stem is super important because it kind of already gives you the question that you need to answer. It's already saying which of the following blinds, obviously, is most likely being used to monitor pulmonary hypertension. So if you know that, you should be able to get down to that final answer with speed, with certainty, with confidence. All right. Remember, the answer choices are A, arterial line, B, Swan Gans catheter, C is Hickman catheter, and D is the pick line. All right. So now we need to get in here and start dissecting these. And obviously, we can't do that with confidence until we know what each one of these lines does. All right, so let's go down the order. A, arterial line. First of all, the arterial line is primarily used for two major things. It's used to do an arterial blood gas analysis. You know, the carbon dioxide, your O2, and so forth. We're trying to pick up those blood gases, analyze them, determine if there's any type of issues. Now, we see up in the question that there's, there's nothing here about any type of blood gas problems or us being worried about blood gases. It doesn't say anything about that. The other use of the arterial line is to measure blood pressure in real time, y'all. All right, listen to me. Arterial line measures blood pressure in real time, all right? And so uh, you, you have your typical blood pressure units that you put across the brachium and measure the blood pressure. Well, that's intermittent blood pressure measurement, all right? But the arterial line can do it in real time. Now, here's the question for you right now. In the question, does it state that any desire or need to have a real-time blood pressure analysis Oh, we don't really see anything that's telling us that we need that at this point. Now, we're trying to look for specifically pulmonary hypertension and be able to monitor that. And that is not what the arterial line does the best. All right. So we can go ahead and already strike through that one. I don't like it. It doesn't answer the question. Let's look at B. Now, this is one that I always used to get wrong. When I was preparing for the MPTE, getting ready, I was used to get questions wrong about arterial lines and Swan Gans catheter and all that stuff because I didn't know that there were other terms that these lines were known as. So what do I mean by that? The Swan Gans catheter is also known as the pulmonary artery catheter. Don't forget it. 
All right. It's also known as the PAC or pulmonary artery catheter. And so this line is super important because it does a couple major things. Number one, it can measure the amount of pressure that's in the pulmonary arteries. It helps us to look for things like pulmonary hypertension, all right? Because that's a lot of times where we where we will develop pulmonary hypertension is from the pressure that's in the pulmonary arteries. Well, the swan gang catheter, it measures the pressure in those arteries. So that's already something that I love. It's already answering the question. But it also is there to evaluate, diagnose someone who has right-sided heart failure. All right. Again, it say it says up in the question that we are trying to evaluate for a suspected exacerbation of his core pulmonale. Well, guess what the swan can catheter does? It monitors for pulmonary hypertension and it diagnoses or helps to evaluate core pulmonale. Ain't that something? All right. So be right now is is automatically the best answer. It definitely answers every part of the question, but that doesn't mean that that's the right one. Let's look at C, okay? C says Hickman catheter. Um, Hickman catheter, also known as a CVC or central venous catheter. All right, so this one is typically threaded through one of the major veins of the trunk. The internal jugular vein is most common. They thread that through the inter, uh, internal jugular vein and into the superior vena cava where it can be used to administer chemotherapy drugs, antibiotics. Um, it could be there. It could be used for a bunch of other reasons. But one of the major ones is to administer chemotherapy agents or antibiotics. It's a major one. It also measures the pressure in the venous system. So we can look at that. All right. That's known as the Hickman catheter or the CVC, also known as the central venous catheter. Now, in the question, does it say anything about us looking for pressure in the, ve the veins or the venous system? Does it say anything about the patient having cancer and us wanting to administer chemotherapy agents long term or something like that? No, it does not. And so we can already eliminate C. It just doesn't go with it. Let's look at our final answer of D. The PIC line, P-I-C-C line. That stands for a peripherally inserted central catheter. It's just exactly what the name, you know, means or what it alludes to. That we're going to insert a line peripherally into a vein. And we're going to thread it all the way up through the peripheral veins into, again, the superior vena cava. And guess what we're using this for? Again, along the lines of that antibiotics and providing somebody with chemotherapy uh, for longer term, we can also use it to draw blood. Uh, you know, that is what a pick line is used for. The one thing I want you to know as you're looking at this question right now, as you're looking at D, I want you to think about this. C and D are very similar in nature. They're all there to administer chemotherapy, antibiotics, uh, uh, blood withdrawal, something along the lines of that. The question has nothing in there stating that our patient has cancer or requires any of that. So therefore, C and D, I look at them as the same answer. They both can be eliminated leaving us with our final answer of B, Swan Gans catheter. For those of you who got this question correct, congratulations, baby. Let's freaking get it. For those of you who didn't, uh, again, I used to get these types of questions wrong all the time, and it was really because I didn't understand all of the different names and terms uh, that could be interchangeable, all right? I also didn't understand fully what these different catheters did for the body and how they helped out and how they an analyzed certain things. I didn't know that. And so what I recommend that you do is get into your acute care book, get into your cardiopulmonary book, find these catheters and figure out what they're truly used for and all the different names. <music>